yesterday. This was how it was. Remember? memory of not enough sleep, not enough replacements, not enough news, a memory of too much and not enough. Everybody paid. We attacked. This country and its allies attacked in the name of four freedoms. Freedom from want, freedom from fear, freedom to speak, freedom to believe. We hit hard. We were the sons and grandsons of old Europe, plowing the track back again. We drove from the west, the Russians from the east. And inside the Nazi fortress Europe, the partisans struck. Remember? Remember how it was? we scourged the enemy in his homeland with more fire and fury than the world had ever seen. We closed in. Berlin. The heart of the idea that all men are created unequal. Thank you. 
Berlin in April of 1945, being reduced. A nice military term meaning to destroy, annihilate, demolish, wipe out. men were after somebody. Do you remember those games you played as a kid? Treasure hunt? Button, button, who's got the button? That was the game. A game of clues. A game of hot and cold. They were playing it for real. Yes, that man. last to the nerve center, the chancellery, where they organized it, the plot against mankind. And now, end of the treasure hunt, end of the game, and where was that one man? Was there ever a spring like this on earth before? The spring light through the broken windows? The brainwork of fascism spilled out? Scattered, scattered. But we never found that man, probably dead. He disappeared from the eyes of the world as he had entered it in smoke and fire like a magician, like the devil. No eclipse of the sun ever made the earth darker than he made it. The greatest maker of death, the greatest maker of tears in history. In the chancellery of the Reich, in the spring of 1945, he disappeared. That was yesterday. But why does yesterday wander through today like a ghost? Why is the news still bad? And if we won, why do we look as if we lost? And if Hitler died, why does his voice still pursue us through the spaces of American life? through this country, a worrying. It spreads from face to face like an infection, a sickness of fear. We live like a man holding his breath against what may happen tomorrow. Stock market dropping, mister. Prices going up. A depression. War talk. We feel haunted in broad daylight, and we seem sure of nothing except trouble. We had a hope, and we put our hope into the hearts of the engines we sent to the firing line. If you weren't there, you'll never know exactly how it was. You'll never know, that is, not exactly. experience 
mark, non-transferable. The man who got hit hard, he knew war approximately. And the other guy who got hit harder, he knew war exactly. So did this man know war exactly. He was the second president of the United States who died at the hour of victory. They knew why they wept. They knew. For we had fashioned a man in this country a world could weep for. And we moved him on a route straight through the heart of the world. That spring, the bitter spring, we were coming to the point of adding up the grief. Of adding up items like widows. We were coming to the end of it to the time of reckoning, the end. Burning out the end of it. We rounded them up, we dug them out. Quizzling and all the other quizzlings. The world was lousy with Judases. We collected all the little killers, the little ones, and the big ones. We had them. Goering. And they knew why as well as we did. Von Ribbentrop. And we made a new law to fit a new crime. Hess. The crime of killing a whole people by your own idea that you were better than they were. Rosenberg. The crime of profiting from murder. Fritcher. Of teaching a whole nation to murder. Ryder. Of ordering murder. And what's the penalty for child murder? Von Papen. Keitel. We tried to make the punishment fit the crime. But we only hanged them. And we arrived at a time for celebrating. Each celebrating in his own way. people of the world owned the world. A current of joy went around the earth. asking for names of where you came from.
think back. Was there ever a hope which flared higher than the hope of midsummer 1945? And what was the hope that day? But that the common victory with and hardest war in history was over. Jung Liao, Ainda, Konietz, Kaput, over. succeeded by the Thomas Rankin Committee. Remember this one? Pelly, the ex-preacher? Remember Gerald K. Smith of the Silver Shirts? Still active. Peace, and all of them back after the shooting war. Merwin Hart, business consultant. Lawrence Dennis, an economist. Homer Loomis, a post-war product. Deathridge, all busy as bees. Deathridge to McWilliams. McWilliams to Burke. The same spiel. In some ways, you could say it was the same as before. Boston in 1948. An Episcopal church in Bayside, Long Island. 1944. you could say it was no different than before the war. The printing presses still busy turning out the old anti-Semitic forgeries. The fly-by-night hate sheets getting the same second-class mailing privileges. Another American voice. Kike. 
lop. Greaser. I got nothing against him if I know that twice. Some of my best friends are Jews. Nah, he was out for the buck and he doesn't care how he gets it. The voice is sometimes crude, sometimes polite, but really one voice, stealing across the birthday like a shadow. This sound out of our customs and our daily barbarisms. Call it the voice of custom. Whoever you are, we welcome you. You are now part of the human race. I will locate you even more closely than that. You are now part of the United States in the fifth decade of the 20th century. I'm going to put some plain facts before you, and it would be wise for you to listen carefully. There are many things you must learn in order to get along. There's among you which are important. The color of your skin is important the slant of your eyes. The shape of your nose. These are facts. We'll also separate you by your names. What's in a name? O'Connor. Goldberg. Wilson. Yes, there are differences among you which will last all your lives. They're as good as written. White, Christian, Protestant. All other things being equal, the best breaks will come your way. Negro, Christian, Protestant. There are 14 million of you. You will live a special life in this country and I advise you to pay careful attention to what I say later. If you are Catholic, there will be some people who won't think well of you, although actual persecution isn't practiced right now. There are some four million others who will work at some jobs and live in certain districts, but their choices will be limited. If you are Jewish, you are one of them. And no matter how many times you will recite the Declaration of Independence, no matter how often you invoke the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendments, no matter what you hear on the 4th of July and whatever rights the laws give you, whatever they say in churches, whatever you are taught in classrooms, these are the facts you will live by. This is how it is for you who are now part of the human family in the United States of America in this decade. Now that youngster over there, when your eyes begin to focus, you will discover many things. A house is where you eat, sleep, and grow. live in a house like this. You live somewhere else. Afterwards, you'll go to work, but you'll rarely show up in the crowd coming out of the main entrance. As a janitor or a porter, you'll use the freight entrance. In some parts of this country, they write it all out on signs. A few others will have to pay attention to signs, too. You'll get to know that separation of people is a living fact. As a Negro in the South, you'll go to a separate school. 
you'll use a separate entrance to the movies. In most states of the South, you won't go to the polls. Of course, you may worship the same God as the others, but in a different church. And this pattern will follow you to the end. They call it Jim Crow. But if you know the facts, you can learn to live with them as millions have done. From the moment you are born, you are learning. I want to leave one idea with all of you. Always face the facts. Face the facts. A fact. already arranged for you. Facts that won't stay put. growing big, exploding. Facts changing into other facts. stand still. These are the casualties of a war. Nothing stands still. fairy tale. beginning is the word. It begins with a word concerning conspiracies abroad, enemies within, races, creeds. In the beginning is the word, the lie. But before the lie is believed, there must be hopelessness. There must be hunger. Add the necessary hate. Find an easy target and blame him for everything. Create a bogeyman. Make him big, world-shaking, and you've got something. a modern medium. Nobody talks back to a nationwide hookup. The lie goes out in a one-way conversation from you to them. 
It goes everywhere at the same time, and the voice has authority. In the beginning is the word, and the whisper moves it in small ways. spreads the way an infection spreads, the way an epidemic gets going. And while the lie spreads, they build their organizations. organization to terror in the streets. In this scheme of things, the young are important. And as for expenses, this is always financed by those with finances, secretly. It grows even when the streets are peaceful. Today, Germany, Tomorrow, war. Conquest begins in a mood of confidence. In the beginning was the word. In the end, rubble. And all the winds that blew, blew from home. Those who had fought brought the victory home.
Where you know the sky, where you know ambush cannot happen, this is the place to plant victory in. What you know without words, after the trial by fire, what you know looking at or listening to without trying, this belongs to you. What you know with your hands, with your skill, this too belongs to you. Look, I'm awfully busy. Will you call me a little later? Oh, of course, you know I do. Goodbye. Mr. Ropes and Ann, I have an appointment. My name is Forrest. Forrest? Oh, yes, Mr. Forrest. Tell Mr. Robson you're here. Mr. Robeson asked me to tell you that all the pilot openings are filled. I'm sorry. I know the score. I've been around to all the other airlines. I just want to make sure. Thanks. On the airlines of post-war America, there are no Negro pilots. No co-pilots, no navigators. Only a thousand Negroes flew in the war against Nazi Germany. We only let a thousand fly. But the old job mopping the floor in the men's room is still open. A Negro flyer, a million soldiers. A people of 14 millions who are still waiting for their share of the victory. Still living out the old statistics. Of 20,000 architects in the United States, less than 100 are Negro. Of 80,000 civil engineers, less than 100 are Negro. Quarters in colleges, medical schools, the Germans put a yellow star on the Jew, but we keep the yellow star hidden in quotas for Negroes, for Jews, for Italians. There are 200,000 doctors and dentists in America. 2% are Negro. Of 50,000 railroad conductors, not even 50 are Negro. In communications, a handful. And these makers of American music do not show up anywhere in our symphony orchestras. Of the million stenographers and typists in the land, 4,000, or two-fifths of 1%, are Negro girls.
But as a reservoir for cheap labor, Negroes serve very well. For jobs paying under $900 a year, Negroes provide 35% of the labor supply. A people of 14 millions still waiting, still lost in the opportunity wanted section, still knocking at the door. Jewish personnel? Oh, yes. We have no objection to the race. How many? Oh, a few hundred, I should say. Now, more specifically, how many office employees do you have? I mean, typists, stenographers, receptionists, people of that sort. Between five and six hundred. I suppose most of them are in this area? Yes. How many of your office girls are Jewish? We don't employ Jewish girls. Our office equipment is so large, uh, their arms are too short. About how many Negroes do you employ? We don't employ any Negroes, because they almost never apply. I got nothing against them if they know their place. That's spaghetti. Some of my best friends are here. I don't employ any Negroes. Finish victory. Nigger. Kike. Wow. The Canadians are cute, though. Jews, you can't trust them. Some of my best friends are Jews. Sicilian. They go for the knife right away. They don't know the meaning of honor. A heap is out for the buck, and he doesn't care how he gets it. My best friend. A strange victory. With the ideas of the loser still active in the land of the winner. That black gets up, and he just collects the boys. Pushing all the time. That's the trouble with the Yids. Shoes, you can't trust them. I've got nothing against colored people. In the beginning is the word, and the word travels in a straight line. out of the rain of shells into this sunlight, into this peace. So rest now, baby. Make a wish now, baby. Because nobody knows the trouble you'll see. Play, baby. rock a -bye, baby, in the tree. Nobody knows, baby. Nobody knows the trouble you'll see. Play while the playing's good. rock a -bye, baby, in the tree. Nobody knows, baby. Nobody knows the trouble you'll see. baby. Nobody knows. And if we won, why do we look as if we lost? Why is the news still bad? Not enough victory to go around. Too many quotas, too many invisible yellow stars, not enough housing to call it a victory, not enough peace to call it peaceful, too much fear, too many raw deals, not enough hope to call it victory. 
so the battle is still on. Without guns now. The old hard battle. And if we want victory, we'll still have to get it.